You're talking about like transcendental consciousness? Yeah, deep, beautiful spaces where people really experience almost mystical states. Well, not almost. You know, really deep spaces of consciousness where or they... Or Stanislav Graf called it non-ordinary consciousness. Oh, truly non-ordinary consciousness. And uh, according to psychiatrist uh, Graf, he said it takes a non-ordinary experience to raise our level of our ordinary everyday experience. Yes, and that's the whole point of ISIS is to raise you to where... You, you're living much more dynamically, much more vitally, with a much higher level of aliveness. Mm -hmm. And that work comes from the Clairvision School. You know, I've done a lot of work with Dr. Samuel Sagan, you know, a lot of meditation work over the years. I recently did a week of silent meditation. Mm -hmm. So, and that's brought into the ISIS room, you know. And uh, this week of silent meditation, after uh, the meditation, did you have kind of like a debriefing? Yeah, after, it's quite weird after not speaking for seven days to then begin speaking. And it's interesting to hear what other people have gone through in the room and, um, and your own experiences, the depths you've gone to and who you are when you come out. And, and, and uh, did you notice that the voice inside your mind was quieter or silent longer? Well, that's, the, yeah, actually I did. I mean, it took a while to get there, mm -hmm. but you reach places where you're actually silent. Yeah, did you ever try the uh, space-time tanks? I can't say half. Oh, I can't uh, say half. Uh, sounds like a perfect fit for you because they're desensitization chambers where mm. uh, you float on water and Epsom salt and you can't hear you, uh, ex except maybe the water sloshing around and, um, and it's, it's pitch dark in there. Yeah, you know, the, the whole quality of being able to skew the senses so mm -hmm. that your, your consciousness can go other places rather than stay locked in its usual container. That's a good way, you know, a good way of, of putting it, to skew the senses. You know, and so that's one of the things that in ISIS is really profound. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy in ISIS is how experiential, in fact, I ended up doing an ISIS today, and I was really, I was... An ISIS with yourself? Or you know, I, I'm also client as well as connector for people. Okay. I, I, I firmly believe that if you're going to be a practitioner, you might as well be doing your own work mm -hmm. and handling your own stuff instead of being out there as teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a constant student, so, you know, you always have to do your own homework as well, you know, instead of thinking... Well, it's the, obvious you've been doing a good Puba. job doing your homework. And that's why? How, how do you say that? Why? Because you're, you're, you're very knowledgeable and uh, very informative. Thanks. So you're telling about your, your ISIS experience today. One of the things that struck me was how experiential it is. You know, it's not someone saying, I see you in a past life. You know, suddenly you're there. You know, you're a first grader. And you're in a first grade frame. You know, I think that's the thing that shocks people about ISIS is they think it's going to be like a dream. But when it's so deeply experiential, you know, that you're right there, it's... Um, it's quite moving. It's quite beautiful. And do you find that uh, when you formally practice meditation that you just kind of slipped into, into meditative states at other places and other times like walking or cleaning or gardening or conversing with people? You find that the background ambient state of consciousness you rest in mm -hmm. is qualitatively different. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a really gradual, incremental process, mm -hmm. you know, over the years. You know, but I find that the ways in which you can experience, you know, the ways you can listen, the ways you can be outside, the ways you can be in a crowd, there's mm -hmm. a different dimension to who you are as a human being, you know, so... Well, I would think that on a practical level or physical level, the nervous system is different and the, the senses of I, sight, I, sound, I would, smell to feel, I would guess that. I, I would guess that your whole hormonal system changes after a while. Oh, yeah. We, you know, we'd, I would. Uh, beta endorphins. Yeah. You know, so we, I think you said earlier how we react differently to stress. Well, we've got one minute left, so... Uh, use this minute to say whatever you want about you, your work, or your class. Well, I will be organizing a meditation um, uh, introduction to meditation. At Infinity? Yes. Excellent. And it's called uh, Awakening the Third Eye Intensive. It's mm. October 11th and the 12th. Okay. The fee for the weekend is 200 Well, well we're not supposed to. Oh, because I apologize. This is pub, pub. No, it's all right. You didn't know. Okay. So, uh, but it, the, the space is limited to the first 25. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we do try to do them a couple times a year. But it's a way to have a tangible introduction to the work. All right. Uh, for more information about uh, Martha Hayden 
Infinity Foundation, InterQuest. Stay tuned to the credits at the end. Until next time, we wish you good health, good spirits, and good fortune. For more information about this show, our guests, Infinity Foundation, or any of our other programs, please visit our website, infinityfoundation.org, or call us at 847-831-8828.